So in the last part of this video here, we had a model with all the markup in our index.html file. We had this demo container where we could open the model and output some quote. And that quote outputting and the control of the model would all be handled through JavaScript, where we got access to all the elements we need to work with, and then registered a bunch of event listeners to open and close the modal, and also to register any changes to that quote, which we loaded into the text area in the modal, also for JavaScript, and which we then, well, updated when we closed the modal. Now, my goal is to not do this by just changing the display style to non and block anymore, but instead to create this entire markup here dynamically in our JavaScript code. So let's comment this all out and let's, well, add it dynamically. And how can we do that? So let's do that. And let's, for example, start with the more simple uh, thing. Let's add the backdrop uh, upon a click of that edit value button. So for that, um, I'll have to do something when we click this button. This is the edit value button. And I will no longer set my styles of modal and backdrop because these no longer exist. I can also remove it up there. And I can also stop getting my references there because these elements don't exist in the DOM anymore. So we can't get access to the modal and the backdrop. Instead, I'll need to create it dynamically. So when we click on that uh, button here where we open the modal, this one here, we'll have to create that backdrop to add it to the DOM. And we can create HTML elements or DOM elements in JavaScript dynamically. This is possible. So in here, let's create this backdrop now. And actually, I'll still create this as a global variable here. And I'll do the same for the modal. So I'll do that still. But they're uninitialized initially. So they're just undefined but this allows me to then use them from other places in my app too. So now back into our code here where we have a click listener on that added value button. Here I'll set backdrop equal to document and then there's this create element method which allows us to create a new HTML element. This method simply takes the tag name as an argument and I'll create a div here. So my backdrop will be a div. With that created, I can access it here on the variable in which I stored the created element. And now I just want to make sure that it has my backdrop CSS class. And for that, I can access class list, which allows me to access all a uh, list of all the CSS classes sitting on that element. And I can call add here to add backdrop like this. Now we won't be able to see this yet because right now our script would still crash because here I got a listener on the backdrop. Um, which essentially will close the model, but I listen to something which is undefined initially, so this would throw an error. The right place for that listener is, of course, after we created it. So here, in this function, I'll now set up my listener, like that. Now, one other issue I'll face is regarding my buttons. This is now not correct anymore. I'm selecting the third button, but if we take a closer look, we now only got one button here because the other two buttons, which existed in the last part, don't exist anymore. So we have to change this too. For the button here, I can actually just say edit value button and use query selector without all and select the first button I find, which is the only button I have on the page. Of course, you could also assign an ID to the button to have an even clearer way of selecting this. By the way, if we later add buttons, this will not cause this to not work anymore because this script runs when the page is first loaded and that is then the point of time which is important for selecting buttons. If we later add more buttons programmatically, this will not run again. So this query selector will not run again and will not select one of the new buttons. We'll always run this when the page is first loaded and at this point of time, we'll only have one button. So that's the added value button to which I wanna add my event listener therefore. And that of course means that these scripts here won't work anymore. So let's actually comment that out. The other two buttons, they just don't exist yet. Text edit will also not exist because, and that means we can of course also comment this out. We don't have a modal in which we could select the text area. And that of course also means that text edit value here won't work. So let's comment this out too. 
And with all these changes made, we should have working code again. There's one thing which will stop this from displaying the backdrop though, and that is that we add this backdrop class, but in the styles, we still have display non here as a default. Now, since we now control the visibility of the backdrop and the modal differently, I'll have to remove that there because these elements now won't exist if we don't want to display them. And that means if we do want to display them, well, then we should certainly always uh, support this with CSS and not hide them through CSS. So now with this, we're almost done, but there's one thing we're not doing with the backdrop. We're creating it, but we're not adding it to the DOM. And that is something we shouldn't forget because this will only create it in memory. To also display something on the screen, I'll have to append it or add it to my DOM. And we can do this by getting access to our wrapping container, which in my case is simply the whole body. I can therefore just call document body and then we could append it at the end or we use insert before to insert before another element and now I want to insert my backdrop and the other element before I want to insert it in my case is the demo container. So I can also select that and I have to select it here. So the demo container, let's store it in this variable, can be selected with the query selector by its class, which it has. So this is the element before which I want to add my backdrop. So this is the reference or the variable name I'll use here in insert before to insert this backdrop in my body before the demo container. And therefore demo container, of course, has to be a direct child of the body. And with that, now if I reload this and I click edit value, we see the backdrop. Clicking on the backdrop doesn't do anything yet though. And we of course also don't see the modal. So let's follow this pattern and let's also create the modal programmatically. This entire code here is responsible for the backdrop. Now we can already add some code to close the backdrop maybe. So we can reach out to our backdrop here and add an event listener, a click listener to execute close modal, just pointing at it, not executing it immediately with parentheses. I just want to pass the address to that function to this click listener so that this click listener will execute close modal whenever a click occurs. And in close modal, I now want to first of all check if my backdrop exists. I can do this with this if check. It will fail if this is undefined. So if that backdrop exists, then I want to call backdrop and I want to remove it, right? And to remove it, I can just call remove on that element. Now this will not work in um, Internet Explorer 7, for example, but it should work fine here. If we reload, this opens it, this closes it. So this is now working with the backdrop. Now let's do the same for the modal and feel free to practice this on your own and pause the video at this point. I'll of course also do it together with you and I'll do it here. Below the backdrop, I also want to create my modal. Now keep in mind, we created a modal variable already. It's just undefined and we can use that variable to create the modal. And just as before, I'll create a new element with create element, document create element to be precise. This will also be a div. And I wanna recreate that markup I used before. Now, unlike the backdrop, this of course also has other children. So we'll have to create these two. We'll have to create the h1 tag. We'll have to create this div, the text area, this div, the buttons in there. So that's quite a lot of work, obviously. And that also is the reason why you use frameworks or libraries like React or Vue, but that's something I'll come back to in a separate video. So, well, let's go through all of that. I have my modal div here. Let's also access the class list and make sure that we add that modal class, which we need to give that the right styling. Now, the next element is that h1 tag here. So let's create that modal heading maybe, could be document, create element, h1. And then on my modal heading here, I will set the text content to, well, simply this edit your statement text. And uh, we do this not with a function call, but with an equal sign. So now this created the h1 tag. We need to add that h1 tag to the modal so we can access modal append child since we want to well append it inside of the modal we don't want to insert it before anything it should just be well the next element in there and therefore now i append my modal heading like this 
Well, that was the h1 tag. Let's repeat it for this div. So let's create another variable. And of course, you can uh, certainly write a more elegant way. I'm deliberately doing this very explicitly to make it clear which steps we're executing. So now I'll create this div with my modal input class. So let's copy that. Text edit container seems to be a fitting name. These names are always up to you. Let's create an element. This will be a div and the text edit container. There we need to access the class list and add this modal input class, which it should have. Let's now also append this. And the cool thing is append child always, well, appends it at the end of the child list. And therefore this will add it after the h1 tag. So I can just append text edit container and make sure it's positioned correctly in the DOM automatically. Now inside the text edit container, I need to add my text area. So I'll create text edit area or however you want to call it just text area, of course, document create element, this will be a text area element. Now that text area text edit area that should actually uh, have its rows configured. And for that, we can simply access the rows property and set this to uh, free important. Um, this has to have be a string, not a number, it's a string. And I'm using free because I used free here too. And now this text edit area should be appended not to the modal, but to the text edit container, of course. So let's access text edit container and append a child there and that child will be the text edit area. The text edit area also, of course, will receive some logic to save whatever the user entered in there. This input listener here to be precise. So we can copy that from down there and add it on our text edit area here. So text edit area, add event listener. Let's comment this in here. And this will make sure that we now listen to input events on the text edit area and that we therefore, well, save the value we enter in the edited quote. We're not done yet though. We also need to add this div with the modal actions. So just as before, let's create that in JavaScript. Modal actions container will be document create element that will be a div. And then I'll access modal actions container, the class list and add my whoops, modal actions class as a string like this. And in there, I need to add my two buttons now. So these two buttons with a type button and button cancel. For that, let's uh, first of all, append our container, of course. So let's reach out to the modal, append a child and append that modal actions container so that we don't forget that. But then let's create the cancel button with document create element will be a button. Now to set that type, that actually is a, an attribute because it's um, used by, by the browser by DOM, so to say. So here I will set, uh, will call my cancel or reach out to my cancel button. And then set an attribute with the set attribute method. And then I want to set the type attribute to button. So that's kind of a special thing. This is not a property of the button object we handle in JavaScript. This instead is just an attribute we add to the HTML code to the DOM so that the browser knows what to do with the button when it's clicked. So it works a bit different here. Now I of course also want to add my class. So cancel button class list add is what I want to call and I want to add button cancel here. Now this cancel button should be added to the modal actions container, not to the modal. So modal actions container append child cancel button is what I want to execute here. And I will now copy that code and repeat it for my confirm button. So let's replace cancel with confirm down there also in the class uh, name we're assigning. And this will now add the confirm button to the modal too. Okay, so now this controls the modal, it adds all the elements, a lot of code, as you can see. Let's now add that modal to our page. And for that, I want to insert it before my demo container still. 
This will be after the backdrop, but before that container. So I'll just copy that code from up there where we added the backdrop, and I'll use that same code to add my modal. Now let's give this a try. Let's reload the page. And edit value loads the modal. Now the text and the buttons is missing because I forgot to set it. I'll do this in a second. And we don't see the text in there. But besides that, it's working. Now clicking on the backdrop doesn't close the modal yet because we're not handling this. Let's fix this step by step. First of all, let's make sure that the buttons have a text. So the cancel button text content will be equal to cancel. And the confirm button text content will be equal to confirm, like this. So that's uh, the first important step. The other important step is that we set the text edit value here to our loaded quote. So when I create my text edit area here, I'll set text edit area value equal to the quote. So now this should be pre-populated too. If I now reload the page, yeah, that looks better. Now, these buttons don't do anything and the modal is never closed. So let's also make sure that this is the case. And for that, on these buttons, on cancel button, for example, I'll add an event listener to the click event. And on the cancel button, I just want to execute the close modal function. So I'll pass a reference to it, just as I did for the backdrop. Now for the confirm button, it's a bit different. The confirm button will receive an event listener it's also listening to a click event, but just as I did it down there, I want to do more than just close the modal. So I'll actually copy that anonymous function from down there and use that here on the confirm button event listener. Make sure to uncomment it. And I will still close the modal, of course, but then I also want to call update paragraph and, uh, well, store the edited quote if it is long enough. Now with that, Let's visit close modal and make sure that we not only remove the backdrop, but also the modal. And for that, I'll add another if check, check if the modal exists, if it's not undefined. And if that's the case, I'll call remove on it. And with that, if we now reload the page, and click edit value, this loads it. If I click the backdrop, it's removed. Click it again, it's loaded. Cancel, removes it, confirm, removes it. Now let's edit it. Cancel, does not accept the edit. Confirm, also doesn't. The reason for that simply is that in my event listener on the confirm button, I'm getting the edited quote here. This is what I assigned to quote. Now edited quote is also what I change here in the text edit area, but there I'm getting the value of text edit, which does not exist anymore. I renamed this to text edit area. So let's fix this here. Tiny mistake from my side. And with that, if we now reload, should still be able to edit this and cancel and not take the change. But if I edit it and click confirm, this is also used there. So now we're handling this model entirely through JavaScript. We don't do anything in HTML. We create and remove the modal in JavaScript. You can optimize this code. You write this more elegantly. But in general, this is the work you have to do if you want to create it entirely in JavaScript. And this gives you an idea of why using some libraries like React or frameworks like Vue and Angular could be a good idea because this still is a relatively simple thing. It's not a super complex one. So I hope this was helpful and helps you a bit with understanding how to do such things with vanilla JavaScript, which of course is fine if you like that. If you don't have more complex requirements, this is certainly um, less to load for your users than if you pull in an entire framework. But of course you also see the potential pitfalls or disadvantages of that. So I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and hopefully see you in future videos. Bye.